Mixed martial arts is a sport predicted on violence. The level of violence can differ from fight to fight depending on the styles of the athletes involved. Some fights are grappling heavy and not many strikes are thrown at all. You will see guys trying to jockey for position and submit the other fighter, while other fights are completely slugfests, where both fighters are trying to take each other's heads right off with every strike thrown. Or when one fighter completely outclasses the other by taking them down landing brutal strikes, Habib Nurmagomedov style. Or outclasses them on their feet like Israel Adesanya did to Paulo Costa or Robert Whittaker. These fights can get very brutal very quickly, with fights sustaining nasty cuts and head injuries. In this video, we talk about some of the nastiest head injuries seen in the UFC to date. This is going to be a good one. Before we get into it, please remember to smash that like button if you liked the video, as well as subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know whenever we have a new video coming out. Now back to our list. Joanna Jojacek Joanna had met Wiley Zhang for the UFC strawweight belt in March of 2020 at UFC 248. Joanna had won just two out of her past five fights but she was coming off a unanimous decision victory over karate hottie Michelle Watson. Wiley Zhang had just defeated Jessica Andraj to become the new champion. This fight against Joanna would be her first title defense. Many expected this fight to be an entertaining stand-up war. It would be the power and explosiveness of Wiley versus the volume and pressure of Yoyanana. This fight proved to deliver in that regard as it turned into a war from the get-go. This fight was an early candidate for fight of the year. The damage was visible on both fighters' faces. But the massive hematoma that had developed on Joanna's forehead stole the show. It started to develop in the later rounds in the fight and got worse as it continued. It looked as if her head had transformed. She showed her toughness and extent of her wounds in an Instagram post a few days after the fight. Hello guys, made it home. I'm in Poland. It's almost 2 a.m. Uh, happy to be back home. I took a long shower. I packed, unpacked some stuff. Now I'm having a small home spa. It's a mud mask. Of course, uh, I'm still having so many bruises on my face, on my chest. The swelling went down, but I feel better. So uh, we good, we good. About to go to sleep. I cannot wait to enjoy my family and friends. Uh, but be safe, guys, okay? Be safe. This showed all her facial bruising. It can be tough to watch, but she seems to have recovered nicely since. Mark Hominick Mark fought Jose Aldo for the UFC featherweight title at UFC 129 in April of 2010. They fought a technical chess match for the majority of the fight. However, Aldo had begun to outclass Mark as the fight went on. Mark was constantly getting hit with hard shots and the damage showed on his face. A massive hematoma began to develop on the forehead. The swelling continued as Mark ate more big shots from Aldo. It looked as if a boulder was developing on Mark's forehead. Many spectators asked if the fight should continue, but Mark pushed onwards and showed his toughness. He lost a unanimous decision and the swelling was immediately treated after the fight. Mike Perry Mike fought Vicente Luque in the welterweight boat in Uruguay at UFC Fight Night. Shevenko vs Karmouche 2 in August of 2019. Both men engaged in a stand-up war that saw both fighters eat big shots. Both men had their faces marked up, but nothing stood out more than Perry's nose, which had been smashed from a strike from Luque earlier in the fight. It looked as if Mike's nose had been carved inwards and sideways. Perry would lose the fight by split decision and required facial surgery to construct his nose. But he did get a bonus for fight of the night. He would recover quickly and ended up fighting only four months later. Donald Cerrone Donald will be mentioned twice here, his first being his fight with Darren Till at UFC Fight Night in England in October of 2017. Donald got wrecked in this fight by a bigger and more technically sound Darren Till. The damage showed on Donald's face, particularly in his nose, which had been smashed sideways due to an elbow Donald had eaten from Till. His nose looked like it had been split in half. Donald would recover quickly though and end up fighting again a few months later. 
The second one is when Donald fought Tony Ferguson at UFC 238 in June of 2019. This was a big, great stand-up war between two long and rangy fighters. Tony began to get the upper hand, though, midway through the first round. Donald continued to eat big shots, and one his eye began to swell up badly. Between rounds, Donald's eye swelled shut, basically up to the point where he could no longer see. The skin around his eye ballooned, and it was clear Donald could fight no more. Referee would wave the fight off due to the damage to Cowboy's eye. Once again, Donald recovered quickly and fought soon after. Alistair Ovrim Ovrim is one of MMA's most prominent fighters. This is because of his accomplishments and longevity in the sport. He has fought everyone the sport has had to offer and is still taking on all comers. Alistair has seen it all. At UFC Fight Night in Washington, D.C. last year in December, Alistair Ovrim met Jazino Rosenstrike. In the main event, Ovrim dominated the fight with his grappling for four rounds, and into the fifth round, it was safe to say Jazino was losing the fight on the scorecards. However, the final minute of the fifth round, Rosenstrike went for a Hail Mary flurry of punches in effort to knock out Ovrim. He proceeded to catch Alistair with some big punches and earned a TKO with only seconds left in regulation. It was a great win for Jarzino, but it was the horrifying condition of Ovrim's lip that sent everyone reeling online. Alistair's lip was literally ripped in half and you could see the flesh hanging off his face. It was a grotesque injury. Luckily, Alistair would get plastic surgery directly after the fight and was healed up within a few weeks. Rory McDonald. Rory fought Robbie Lawlor for the UFC welterweight title at UFC 189 in July 2015. This was a rematch from their 2013 fight where Lawlor beat Rory by decision. This fight proved to be a bloody war between the two fighters, with both athletes walking away with battle scars. But it was Rory who wore the most visible damage, as his nose was completely smashed as if someone carved in a bloody hole where his nose used to be. This would be one of the many times that Rory would break his nose. However, this time was the most grotesque. Leslie Smith MMA is a sport where you find many fighters with cauliflower ear. Most wear can compete normally under this ear condition. However, this would not be the case when Jessica I fought Leslie Smith at UFC 180 back in 2014. Leslie was hit a few times on her cauliflower ear, which caused it to literally explode and pour blood. Her ear was hanging off the side of her head, covered in blood. Herb Dean would stop the fight when he saw the extent of the damage. Rulian Paiva Rulian met Rogerio Bontorin at UFC Fight Night in Uruguay in August of 2019 in a pivotal flightweight bout between two prospects in the division. This fight promised to be action-packed and it delivered in that regard. However, Rulian ate a vicious knee to the forehead early on in the fight. This caused a cut right above his eye that continued to get worse as the fight continued. It got so bad, the referee had the fight called off later in the first round. Dana White shared before and after pictures of the stitching cut on Rulian's forehead. It is nasty, but Rulian showed a ton of heart in the process. Cyborg Santos This one took place in Bellator, but it was brutal nonetheless. When Cyborg Santos met Michael Venom Page back at Bellator 158 in July of 2016, this fight was expected to be a stand-up war. The fight was competitive until Michael caught Cyborg with a flying knee that sent him straight to the canvas. The referee jumped in quickly and stopped the fight before any follow-up strikes could be thrown. At first glance, it looked like Cyborg would be fine. However, we learned from one of Cyborg's Instagram posts that the knee strike fractured his skull and caused his brain to swell a bit. From the pictures and x-ray, you can clearly see what looked like to be a hole in the forehead, along with several other facial fractures. The extent of this injury is quite severe. He would require surgery and rehab, but he seems to be okay now. He has not fought since that TKO loss. Okay guys, what did you think of this list? 
Is there anyone you think I left off this list or should not be here? Let me know in the comments. Please remember to smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. It helps me out a ton. Also to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get informed every time we drop a new video. I appreciate you guys watching until the end and I talk to you guys again soon.